Hey there everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, this is a video that I promised to bring to you all, if you recall, uh, on my video on defining what a vintage sewing machine is and whether it's heirloom quality or just an older vintage machine, an old machine. Uh, I showed you um, the Janome, which you now see on the right, and I have another machine to join it. And today, what I want to do is show you uh, essentially the insides of these machines that could trick you. You might think that they are heirloom quality. I mentioned that the Janome was heavy, and it is. The machine next to it is, says Eaton on it, Viking Eaton. Uh, and it was, uh, this was a uh, department store chain, not unlike a JCPenney. And they had their machine, of course, made... Uh, by a company, uh, it was actually made by Brothers specifically. So you see this and you think, oh, okay, these are both vintage machines. Uh, the one here on the left is even heavier than the Janome is. Surely it's an heirloom quality machine. Well, unfortunately, neither of them are. And when I purchased them, I knew that that was likely and I, and I bought them for that reason because I wanted to find a machine <clears throat> that might be rescuable, but uh, the primary purpose of this was to have an example to show in the video for you guys. Now, each of these machines did not cost a great deal. I think I gave $10 or $15 each for them. These machines are not heirloom quality machines, but they fall into this sort of in-between category, which I call hybrid vintage machines, for lack of a better word. If you guys think of a better thing to call them, well, uh, I'll consider it. But... Uh, for the time being, let's take a look and see what we have here. So on the right, you have a machine, and it actually has the Janome name on it. Now, <clears throat> each of these machines were made in Japan. Janome is actually a very well-known name now, but back in the 70s, it was, not as, uh, it was not as recognized by consumers. And so Janome, like many other Japanese sewing manufacturers, uh, originally created its business and built it up by making other people's machines. And this Eaton, or the Viking Eaton, not to be confused with Husqvarna Viking, which it, <clears throat> which it is clearly not, uh, this machine was made by the Brother Company. Now, any of you who own a Brother Riviera uh, free arm machine will recognize this because it's actually the same machine. It's just wearing a different color scheme. It has the same dial same reverse button, uh, the same, even the same uh, plastic covers to its, to its levers here, only I, I believe the Riviera Brother is sort of like a, a, an off-white and, and a bright orange color. So again, the department store said, we want a high quality machine, and they gave it a special color scheme, and then of course they put the Viking Eaton branding on it, and uh, thus a new quote-unquote brand was born. Now, Remember I mentioned to you all that if you are going to uh, buy a machine and you're not sure if it's heirloom or not, what that means is, if you saw the prior video on this topic, is it all metal in the places that it counts, where it really counts, which is the mechanical uh, parts of the sewing machine, the parts of the machine that do all the work, right? So not the little side panel, the little plastic panel you see on the Janome, that's not an issue nor are the plastic knobs, which are really covers to uh, metal, uh, or they should be covers, to metal levers and linkages. So we're going to go inside both of these machines, and I'm going to give you sort of a, a top-down look at uh, items you should be looking for. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about, what, so what if it's a hybrid machine? Why does that make a difference? And what should your approach be? when you are either deciding to buy an old machine or maybe someone offers it to you and says, hey, I've got an old sewing machine. I heard you're interested. Would you like to, well, did you like to have it? Or um, <clears throat> would you like to purchase it? Um, or maybe you find it in a thrift store. There are many places you can come across these machines. And to many people's eyes, these machines look old. Why? Because they are. They are vintage machines. This machine, as I mentioned before, is probably circa 1977, 78. Uh, give or take a year or so. And then this model, uh, I'm going to suggest to you, is around, was made around 1974-75, just a few years before. 
and we're going to take a look inside and look at some of the differences. I've got my work flashlight out here. Okay folks, I've got the um, camera now positioned with what you might call an aerial view and I've got my straight um, straight edge um, screwdriver tips that I'm using. As I mentioned to you before, it really helps prevent stripping of any kind of screws really uh, and I use this in place of a tapered screwdriver. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lid off here and I want to show you what you would not assume is inside of here. This particular lid is not plastic, it's still metal. The hand wheel is steel, is, is steel, it's metal. It hasn't been changed over to plastic. Again, 1974. One of the challenges is when you're trying to figure out which of these machines is, is a hybrid versus a um, heirloom quality vintage machine, it's a little tough because it varies by year and by brand and even by model series within a brand. So let's, well, gotta keep turning here. Here she comes. Okay, the lid is off. Now, I want to show you what's awesome about this machine first because the purpose of this video is not to disparage these machines, but I want to make it very clear as to what exactly it is you're getting and you're not getting. Now, <clears throat> one of the things you will see is this, all of this steel here, this beautiful uh, uh, steel construction. You have a steel body. You still have a steel uh, bobbin door down below. Uh, you have a lot of metal. This thing is really heavy. Now, when you, I'm going to zoom in and I want you all to see this. One of the things that the Japanese took from the Italians was this. Uh, I recognize this style of um, mechanism for the zigzag. Now, you'll notice it's very stiff and I'm not going to force it. Just like I've shown you on the Kenmore, you have to be careful. This, this is... Uh, I can get this to function again. It's not now because I haven't even touched it yet in terms of overhaul. But I want you to look very closely at the machine because when you, if you were to open up the top, you look at it and you think, wow, this is metal. This is, this is really heirloom quality. This is great. I'm going to restore this machine. Now, at first glance, you might not see anything here that is plastic. Now, when I, again, when I say plastic, I'm not talking about the little covers of the levers. Those are not the issue, and those are not a deal breaker when you're trying to figure out if a machine is heirloom quality. Uh, <clears throat> this machine has, I see three components in the drivetrain that are not steel. They're not iron, they are plastic. And I'll show you how, uh, how, we, how we do this. I'm gonna zoom in and give you, try to give you an inside view. If we can peek underneath this, this metal gear set here, and I'll show you what I'm speaking of. Okay, folks, I'm gonna to try to illustrate this. It's hiding under here, but I'm, first I'm gonna turn the hand wheel. And when I do, I want you to see, you're gonna see a cam move. Let's put some light here. Maybe that'll help show it. Look closely. As I turn, you're gonna see the cam of the drive shaft, which is steel move. Now, notice the piece that's coming up around it on the sides, on the front and the back. You see that little white, those two white pieces moving right here? You see one on either side? Those are plastic, okay? So the, so the arm or the cup that the cam rotates in is plastic. It's, <clears throat> let's see if I can give you a better photo or a better photo indication. Point, point the pen right there. That's plastic, it's nylon. It's been there since the machine was created and it seems to have worked fine. I cannot tell if anyone used <clears throat> lubricant on it, which would seriously shorten its lifespan. So again, that is a little piece of plastic that's hiding in there. Now, we're gonna come over to the other side and we're gonna see if I can get this to show up for you. Okay, folks, now gear number two that is plastic. What you will see, there is a drive shaft that may or may not show up that is steel and it has a worm gear on it and that worm gear actually uh, works in tandem with another gear, which is white. It's white plastic. Now I'm gonna turn 
I've got the light on here. I'm going to turn the hand wheel and let's see. You'll see the zig part of the mechanism moving. Now watch. Right there. No, that's my thumb. Right here. <clears throat> you should see where you see that white that white right right there. That is a nylon gear. And of course you 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 wouldn't immediately notice it. Let's take the light off and see if the camera will naturally pick it up in the daylight I have coming through the window. Again, I'm going to turn. I'm turning the hand wheel. Now watch straight ahead. There we go. You should be able to see that white gear. You see the teeth on it. and you should be able to see it turning. And again, that particular gear has grease on it, so someone has lubricated it. It does not look cracked or broken. Now, there's one more plastic gear here, and I'll show you how I discovered that. Okay, everyone, if you look beneath the little metal trough area, which is where the zigzag mechanism moves, you will see another gear, and this one is black in color, and it's right here. Now I saw that and that can be tricky because it looks like it has some oil on it and it could be a metal gear. So I, in order to test this, I took, this of course is my uh, little magnet tool, my telescoping magnet tool, which you're getting a macro shot of right now. Of course I use this to pick up screws and things and I put it down, obviously it sticks right to the, to the body, but when I put it down up against the gear, it doesn't attract. So that gear is, is some sort of pop form of polymer. It is not metal. And I'll turn there. I'm turning the uh, hand wheel, and you can see the gear moving. But that plastic gear, we have two. We have a white plastic gear. We have a black plastic gear, and we have a white plastic um, holder of the drive shaft where the cam rolls on. I don't know the exact name of it, but I showed that to you. Now. <clears throat> this machine would have been fairly expensive when it was new. It had quite a few features. Um, it had built-in stitches, and we know that mechanically all metal machine, heirloom, heirloom, heirloom quality machines, can certainly handle that. But this was these plastic pieces were not introduced to to bring in some new feature that they couldn't do in steel they were introduced to reduce to to lower the cost of the machine uh, to keep the price competitive and again you know these gears have some lubrication on them i don't see any cracks but this is something to to be to be uh, to be aware of when you're looking at machines now should you buy this machine or not I would not necessarily abandon this machine. I didn't pay very much for it because I knew or I suspected that it had uh, less than 100% all metal working parts inside. But I'm going to, uh, I'll do a video on what you should do when you have one of these and you think you might want to overhaul it, but you have to decide how much time and or expense will I spend. There could be a really good case for bringing this old Eaton machine back to life. It may have a lot of life in it. So please, if you have one of these machines, or you know someone that does, you never want to throw them away. You certainly uh, don't want to abandon them. There can be many useful things for these machines. You can give it to someone, you can sell it to them, you can donate it to someone who might want to invest the time in it, assuming that the, the plastic gears are not cracked. Now here is the Janome machine, and you saw this in an earlier video. So we'll take the top off of this machine. It only has one screw holding on the lid, so I guess they were trying to cut costs even. Neither of these machines, of course, had oil uh, holes. You have to remove the lid in order to oil it. Now, <clears throat> folks, this was only a few years later. Different manufacturer, but take a look. I don't even have to, to point. You can see it, it's obvious. And this is the very odd thing about this. So I'm going to tilt it toward you so you can see. And it's amazing. You know, the drive shaft and parts of the linkages here are steel. They're very high quality. 
and you even have uh, what looks like, well, let's test it. I've got my little magnet tool. Of course, the magnet sticks to the drive shaft. It sticks here. Does it stick there? Yeah. So underneath this white gear is steel. Uh, so we have some solid components. Now you'll notice that the cam of the machine actually rests in a steel component. So Janome chose not to use plastic here, but we've got plastic on this gear, and then we have a series of, um, these are basically built-in cams, but they're nylon or some form of plastic. And the same is true of this, this knob right here. So the knob is attached to a steel shaft, but notice, and I can turn this, it's plastic. Now, and it's actually moving. This machine may not require a great deal of me to bring back, and that's a good thing because uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you um, my approach to these machines. I used to ignore them, but I've decided that under certain circumstances, they are definitely worth preserving, and you, you don't want to throw anything away, again, as I've said, that's working. If something is working or, or requires very little uh, time and effort to bring back, you, you definitely want to consider saving it. In fact, some of you, please, please uh, make mention in the comments if any of you own machines of this era, maybe not these exact models, because again, you, you may be using one of a machine like these right now and you didn't even know that it had plastic in it. Okay, so it's very important to note if you do, you don't ever want to put sewing machine oil or grease on those plastic parts. In fact, that, again, as I've mentioned before, that was one of the selling points to the manufacturers is you don't have to lubricate plastic gears, and you should not, uh, which supposedly was going to make for less maintenance. Lubricating a sewing machine is not difficult. It's not that big a deal, but this was part of the selling. Uh, I'm sure that customers, if they had asked and if they had seen it, which most of them didn't, why is there plastic? Uh, it could have been you know, sold as the latest uh, space age polymer, and it was going to last forever, and you don't have to maintain it. But as you can see, all machines that are real machines need to be maintained. So there you have it, guys. Even when it looks like it's all steel, there are plastic components in here. This is 1970s. Uh, this, uh, this would be early 70s by the mid to late 70s. Again, it's a very gradual shift in how much steel versus how much plastic is in a sewing machine. And it's, it's a shame that they did this, but I wanted you to see the inside, to see what I was speaking of. So these are what I refer to as hybrid vintage quality sewing machines. And by that I mean they, are, they have a lot of heavy duty uh, features. The motors in the 1970s are still very good quality. The electric motors that these machines run on. And as you can see, even in the, uh, the machine with more plastic, there's still uh, metal. There's still mechanical uh, components made of steel, but they are gradually, over time, cheapening the product. Uh, and you can just see this. It's a very gradual, slow slide. Now, <clears throat> in the earlier video, I showed you a 1908, I believe I said 1908 Singer 15, right? That's clearly an heirloom quality machine. But the year, in and of itself, does not always determine whether it's heirloom quality or not. Because as I mentioned, even in the early 60s, you had European manufacturers starting to put plastic gears in their machines. Uh, the Japanese were able to last a little bit longer. And of course, that Kenmore free arm that I have shown you, it, it was all steel until 1976. Uh, I think the last all-metal versions of those machines came out in 76, and then the next model series, they started to put plastic in the Kenmores. Sears could do that. They could demand that higher level of specification, because don't forget, back in the day, this is not true today, but back in the day, Sears had an amazing guarantee. It was, you, know, you could see it over the front of, of the door as you walked into the store. It said, satisfaction guaranteed. Sears had a very generous return policy back in those days. And when you sold products at Sears, they had to be durable because otherwise they would have lost a lot of money on returns and warranty claims. And you can see how the, the, the guarantee of the retailer impacted the, the quality of the merchandise they sold. But anyway, 
whether you are dealing with a, a late, you know, a mid 70s Kenmore or an early 1900 Singer, the, the takeaway here is heirloom quality vintage machines, machines that you can give lots of hours, as you have seen me doing with that sick Kenmore free arm that I'm still, that I'm still uh, hammering away at, or you can go all the way back to the treadle days of the, uh, the early machines. Whichever year it is, it's important to note that once you get into the 1960s, that's when you start, need to start poking around and looking, look underneath, look above. That shouldn't tell you to ignore the machine, but it's something to keep in mind. So if, let's say you found one of these machines and you took, you're in the thrift store and they let you take the lid off, you take the lid off and you, you're looking around. If you see plastic gears, that doesn't mean you, don't, you can't buy it. Make sure they're not cracked. Turn the hand wheel. Make sure there are no cracks in there. If there's any lubrication, I'm gonna show in uh, the next video. I keep promising more videos there. The next video, I'm gonna show how to overhaul one of these hybrid machines and how to decide when to overhaul it. And then we have to start making decisions about when, when do we overhaul and when do we decide to either donate it, give it away, or even salvage it for parts. So it's not uh, immediately obvious when you see one of these machines. And I, and I want to emphasize again, these machines are very strong. They're very powerful. Uh, they make beautiful stitches. Uh, whether these two do, we'll see when I'm done. But again, if you'll keep following, uh, I hope you do, and watch. I have no idea how these machines are going to turn out because I haven't touched them. I literally had them. I bought them. I said, I need to get a video to talk to you all about. I want to show you the difference between heirloom quality and vintage machines that can last a very long time. Obviously, these have. I don't see any cracks in the plastic yet. But I want to make sure that we, we kind of call out the differences and without abandoning these and trashing them because these machines are far and above superior to uh, the new plastic machines today. And yeah, they are vintage. They're 40, sometimes 50 years old. That's vintage. But again, the, uh, the consumer products were changing in the 60s and by the 70s, you can see just in a, a few short years, you can see how they keep moving and taking out more of the quality and putting in more of the plastic. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how these turn out uh, when I get ready to make the video on how to overhaul a hybrid vintage sewing machine that is mostly all metal. And we'll also address when is that appropriate and when is it not a good idea. So I hope you uh, continue watching. Thank you for subscribing, those of you who have. And if you do, you can click the little bell symbol and it will tell you when I have posted new videos. So there you go, a little trip back to the 1970s. Uh, this one was obvious. It has those, those, uh, those neutral earth tones. And uh, any of you who have a brother Riviera, that's your machine. It's just posing as an Eaton in a different color scheme. Thank you all for watching and happy sewing, everyone.